There's a four-wheeled working class revolt spinning through the streets of Seattle. Cameron. Yes. I'm Chris. Come on in. I got a TV crew with me. Can we take us for a ride? Yep. Good. People who drive for Uber are buckling up and picking a side. I think unions as a whole would come in and ruin the flexibility and kind of be your own boss part of it. We have no say. I mean, they, they just ignore. I mean, we can email the companies about issues that we have, and they just get ignored. I mean, I can't think of any issue drivers have brought up in the time I've been driving that's been addressed. Uber's smartphone-based business model, which hooks up passengers with drivers, has obliterated the rules of the taxi industry. But there's a new challenge to the company's ambitions. Labor wants to put its stamp on Uber by giving drivers the right to join a union. Beyond Uber, an entire emerging industry of workers who earn a living from their smartphones could be affected if the union concept gets traction. If it's going to happen anywhere in North America, Seattle might be the place. The city recently introduced a $15 minimum wage, the highest anywhere in the United States. And its left-leaning city council includes the likes of Mike O'Brien. He wrote the bylaw that gave Uber drivers the right to organize. We have a company now that's valued at more than 60 billion U.S. dollars and their drivers are making less than $3 an hour. That's, um, there's nothing innovative about that. Drivers' pay and benefits are the most contentious issues. Many Uber drivers hate how the company sets their rates and can cut them at a moment's notice. These drivers are told, um, often with no notice, like, hey, this weekend there's a 25% sale because of the football game, and so guess what? You just took a pay cut. Um, you know, when, um, uh, you know, even a company like Walmart, who doesn't have very good labor practices, when they put their TVs on sale, they don't cut their workers' wages to pay for it. That comes out of corporate profits. The distinction over whether Uber drivers are like employees or independent contractors is crucial. U.S. federal law permits only employees to unionize. Independent contractors can't to avoid practices like price fixing and to encourage competition. Some instances, these drivers look like independent contractors. You know, they own their own vehicle. They set their own hours. Um, in other cases, they look like workers, you know. They don't set the rates they pay. Some Canadian provinces, such as British Columbia, already recognize a hybrid category known as dependent contractors. People such as truckers who own their own rigs, but haul and get paid exclusively by a single company. Still, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, one of the most powerful lobby groups in the U.S., has slapped the city of Seattle with a lawsuit. It claims the pro-union bylaw reflects a broadside attack on the fundamental premises of independent contractor arrangements as well as the nascent on-demand economy that relies on it. I think what they're going to try to do is it's part of their larger effort to preempt, which is to say that local governments, municipalities shouldn't be able to make regulations. In the meantime, Uber drivers are meeting regularly so that when a unionization vote happens, they'll have the support to win it. We sat in on one meeting and met Peter Kuhl. He came to Seattle a decade ago as a refugee from South Sudan. Uber is taking advantage, yes. I, I will say yes, Uber taking advantage. Uh, the drivers, it's, it's diverse, but majority are immigrants. Majority that drive for Uber, they are all immigrants. Uber has often been accused of playing dirty, of using unethical practices, such as ordering and then canceling thousands of rides with its main competitor, Lyft. Pro-union drivers complain Uber is now pressuring them by deactivating their accounts as drivers and by making intimidating phone calls. They're scared of saying something. Like when you first start, you will be say, oh, don't say this, don't say this, and don't say this, you, you know. And has Uber been doing that? They did it. They did it. In 21 months, that's about 360 rides a month. Uber is fighting back with heartwarming testimonials from drivers such as Larry Green. If I'm showing three houses in the morning, I can drive with Uber in the afternoon. Who the company offered up as an example of a contractor who wants nothing to do with the union. They're trying to control a system that's not necessarily needs to be controlled. It's still so new in that sense. I mean, it's a business model that it's allowing um, thousands of drivers around the world um, flexibility, freedom, and opportunities that 
you know, five years ago, they weren't available. The flexibility with Uber. Flexibility. Flexibility. That word, flexibility, is everywhere around Uber. Uber's Seattle general manager used it again and again in an interview with us. We believe that flexibility and the freedom of flexibility for drivers is paramount. When you ask them why they enjoy driving on the platform, it's because of that flexibility. And anything that threatens that flexibility threatens the reliability, the safety of the platform, and we want to make sure that that is preserved. It's too soon to know if the union drive will succeed, but the idea is already spreading. Jurisdictions in California are copying Seattle's law. Don Gerhardt is the business manager for the Teamsters Union, which is helping the drivers. I think it's significant because I think more and more of the work that we do uh, in America and around the world is going to be dispatched through apps, whether that's healthcare, care, uh, home cleaning businesses, other types of delivery services. That work is going to start happening instead of on the factory floor or in a normal office setting. That's going to start happening uh, over the smartphone and over applications. And so even though your work happens over a smartphone, you're still a worker and you're still a person who should have rights and, and a say in what happens to you on a day-to-day -day basis. It's a groundbreaking fight that could transform the emerging app-based economy and the growing legions of people, including many Canadians, who rely on their smartphones to make a living. Chris Brown, CBC News, Seattle.